Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video we're going to take a look at all of the settings that you can adjust on the HTC HD2. Let's start off with the settings that HTC lets you change, then we'll drill into the standard Windows Mobile settings. So sliding all the way to the right, we have the Settings tab. So let's go through this. We're going to start with Personalize. In Personalize, we can adjust the Home tab wallpaper to either a weather wallpaper or an animated wallpaper. And of course, tapping on either will give you your gallery, and you can go into the Albums and pick a picture from there. We can also change the lock screen wallpaper. This will also affect the wallpaper uh, that occurs or shows when you go to the Start menu. So for example, this is the same wallpaper as the lock screen wallpaper. So you can change that. You can also change the home screen tabs and uncheck certain ones that you don't want. And of course, rearrange them by tapping and dragging like so. Although you've been able to do this in previous versions of TouchFlow 3D, now they call it HTC Sense. I'm gonna click cancel. We can change the font size to a larger or smaller size, depending on how good your eyes are. I like to have it as small as possible so that I fit as much screen, as much data on the screen as possible at one time. Let's go back. And then we can change the vibration feedback. So uh, this will turn on vibration, the haptic feedback, when you're typing on the keyboard or when you're tapping these buttons along the bottom. They use up a little bit of battery life when you're using that vibration feature. So I leave it off just to save a little bit on battery life. Let's go back and go to the next thing. In wireless controls, we just have the standard uh, communications manager. Although this is new down here, Wi-Fi router. And we've covered this in a previous video. If you have this running over a 3G connection, you can actually turn it into a wireless hotspot. So imagine you have your device and you're in a car and you're getting 3G coverage. Well, you can beam out a Wi-Fi signal as if you had a Wi-Fi router um, from your 3G connection. It's a really awesome program that has a lot of use. It has the same functionality as the MiFi that you may find on Verizon or Sprint. So let's go back, sound and display. So here we can change the profile of the phone to normal, vibrate, silent, or automatic. We can change the ringer volume, the system volume, change the ringer to perhaps another sound, and you'll get a little preview. Of course, that's the default. Go back down, we can change the ringer type so that we can have it uh, vibrate then ring, vibrate and ring, and so on and so forth. We can change the notifi notification sounds for, um, whoops, let me go back, for uh, a new message or a new voicemail or a missed call. And tapping on that will bring up uh, whether you want it to vibrate. And you can also change the actual sound for that particular alert. We're staying in this nice HTC interface for all of these settings, which is a really great experience. Let's go back down further. We can have quiet ring on pickup, which is pretty cool. When the phone rings and you pick up the device, it will sense the movement and quiet the ringer, which makes a lot of sense, right? After the phone rings, you know that someone's calling you. You don't need the ringer to be so loud to annoy people. Um, and down here is pocket mode, which is pretty cool. The device will sense if it's in your pocket or in a bag, and it will turn up the volume on the ringer. That can be very useful. Here we can change the backlight brightness. Although it's good to have it on automatic adjustment so that it optimizes it based on ambient light conditions. And if you uncheck that, these will illuminate, but I leave it on there. And we have other settings on how the backlight should behave under various power conditions. So let's go back and we have one more here, calibrate the G sensor. Uh, this doesn't need calibration too often, so I'm not going to go into that. And let's go to data services. And this is where you do all the syncing things. So how often the stocks sync? And you can tap on that and change how often it syncs. We can change how often weather syncs and also how often active sync will reach out and grab your contacts and your email and your calendar and so on and so forth. You can also specify here your username and password for Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and also your Gmail account if you have that set up on your device. So that is data services, location, Checking this box will tell your device that it's okay to reach out and find your location, and it's good to, to keep that on. Going down a little bit more, we have security. And here in encryption, uh, you can choose to encrypt files when placed on a storage card, although we're dumped back into the ugly Windows Mobile interface here, as you can see. Uh, we can manage certificates, we can require a password to wake the phone, which again will dump you back into the ugly Windows Mobile interface. And we can factory reset if you want to bring this all back to factory condition and erase all of your data. Let's continue down the chain here. We go to applications. 
And we can remove programs, although again, this is Windows Mobile interface, it's not the HTC interface. And we can go to Managed Programs, with, which is used in kind of corporate environments. Uh, down a little bit more, we have SD card and phone storage. So this will show you really how much storage you have left if you're using a micro SD card, or how much storage is left on your device. Date and time. We can adjust to have 24-hour time format, or we can adjust uh, the particular local time settings. Down one more is locale and text. And this is where we can change the regional settings, whether you're um, what language you speak, how you want the date format to be. And this is spruced up from the standard Windows Mobile interface, which is nice. We can also change the text input settings. So if you want the XT9 to suggest a word or do a spell check, you can check those off here. And down here, you can relaunch that tutorial that you saw in the beginning. Um, and I don't know if there's an easy way to get out of this. Looks like there is. Perfect. Let's go back. And updates, oh, went to the wrong, well, here we are in other, and these are some settings for specific programs. So we can go into Task Manager, and this will show you all the programs running. Unfortunately, the HD2 doesn't come with HTC's Task Manager that allows you to specify that the X button closes the program rather than keeps it in hibernation. So I've got a ton of programs running right now, but because this device is so much RAM, it really doesn't matter. I could run three times, four times as many programs and still be running smoothly. And we can change the settings for Microsoft My Phone, for USB to PC, what happens when you plug it into your computer, and so on and so forth. And let's go back to update and feedback. Uh, I like to keep error report turned off just to save a little bit of resources. Um, and we also have customer feedback, send feedback to Microsoft. And finally, on the bottom, about the phone, you can see kind of what's inside of your phone, what sort of uh, resolution it has, how much memory it has. You can see the speed of the processor is an insane 1,024 megahertz. That is why the device seems so fast, even though I'm running lots of programs right now. So let's go into the full settings of Windows Mobile, the stuff that you've seen for generations now of devices. So we're going to go into Menu and All Settings. And so here we have the standard Windows Mobile 6.5 screen. We can go into the Today screen and sort of change the, uh, the appearance. We can change what is on the Today screen. I'm going to get out of that. We can also go into Personal and click on Buttons, but you can't do anything in here. You can't change the button assignments uh, down here. So it's kind of worthless to go into that screen. Also in personal is the default Windows Mobile stuff, phone settings and input settings. So let's go back and we'll go into system and we see some usual stuff here. We can clear storage, encryption, sort of stuff that we've already seen in the HTC settings. But there are some things in here that you don't get, um, such as the standard old Windows Mobile memory screen. So even with all of those programs running, we still have 176 megabytes of free RAM left. A lot of devices start off at about 120 and go down into about 60 or 70 megabytes from there when you run this many programs. But the HD2 just has so much RAM that it's really terrific. Um, going down a little bit more, we have the usual stuff. We have screen, and this is funny. You can actually align the screen even though it has a capacitive display. And it works just like it works in, uh, in Windows Mobile with a resistive display. You just move the cursor around on the screen. Although I'm not sure why a capacitive screen would go out of alignment. I guess, I guess it can. We can enable clear type. Strangely, by default, this device doesn't have clear type enabled. But what it does is it smooths out screen fonts a little bit, which I think makes it look a little nicer. And then we have some redundancy here. This is the text size setting that we saw previously. So nothing else of nothing else terribly interesting in here. We've car kit mode, which you can check off to have the Navi panel launch. Uh, when you connect the optional accessory, and we'll cover that in future videos. And I've got this connected to uh, my Bluetooth in my car, so it has that listed there. And let's go back and finally end up in connections. Again, very usual stuff here that we've seen in Windows Mobile devices before. Connection set up so that you can have it set up your settings for whatever carrier you have. Communication manager, Wi-Fi settings, account so that was a quick look at the settings on the HTC HD2. It's great that HTC has so fully, deeply integrated the whole HTC Sense interface, even into most of the settings. There are still some areas where you're dumped back into the sort of ugly Windows Mobile interface, but for the most part, you can get most things done through the screen, uh, and it's a really good experience to sort of mess around with the settings and tweak and change things. That's it for now.